Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Patrick Kearns. I'm gonna be your instructor for microbiology, Sci 204, this semester at Roxbury Community College. So welcome, I'm very excited to have you all. I know this is sort of a odd semester. It's, you know, pretty much most of your schedule at Roxbury is gonna be remote. And then you have the sort of overwhelming um, backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, presidential elections, and all the other crazy stuff that's going on in the world. Um, but we're not going to let any of that stop us. Um, we're definitely we're going to we're going to keep working. We're going to work on microbiology. We're going to understand some core concepts in microbiology. And we're going to learn all sorts of the crazy and fun things that microbes do. And so, if you couldn't tell by now, I'm very excited about microbes. So I hope we can get you also very excited about microbes going forward. So I just wanted to um, post this quick introductory video. I'll tell you about myself. Tell you about the course. How it's going to go. Uh, basically, explain the syllabus. Um, as things are going. So I'm going to switch to a screen share and we will talk a little bit about this course. So, uh, so again, Psi 204, this is microbiology. And so uh, just some basic information about myself. This is my email address. Um, it's available on the syllabus. I've also put my cell phone on top of the syllabus as well. Um, Please don't abuse it. Uh, it's there just in case you know you need a quick phone conversation with me or something like that. Um, just so you have it, you can even text me if you want. Just let me know it's someone from Roxbury um, because you know some random numbers not going to really mean too much to me. Um, email is the best way to get in contact with me um, as a whole um, because I don't have an office. I won't be on campus at Roxbury. Um, most of you. Should I'm more than happy to help you in any shape or form that I can. Uh, so just to give you a little background about myself, um, I got my undergraduate from UMass Boston and I got my doctorate from Northeastern. And so I'm a local boy. I just don't have that super sweet Boston accent, um, which, I, which I think is pretty good. I'm not, a, not the biggest fan of the Boston accent overall. Uh, but my background, um, as you can see from these two pictures here, is both in terms of working in salt marshes. So these are coastal grassland ecosystems, uh, very, very muddy, but also very, very fun to look at uh, and work in. So I looked on the microbiology of these beautiful ecosystems. And then um, after that, I worked on plant microbiome, so how microbes influence plants. And so we're actually gonna talk about both of these topics, environmental microbiology, as well as symbiosis um, later on in the semester as we sort of lay the foundations for this uh, semester. So um, in terms of course materials, we have um, a textbook as all college courses do. Uh, but unlike many college courses, this is going to be an open access textbook. So you do not have to pay for this textbook. It is available online for free. So if you go to the syllabus or you click on this link here, uh, it will take you to the textbook. Um, it's a pretty good textbook. Um, I think the best part about it is it's free. Um, as you probably know, textbooks cost hundreds of dollars and you only use them for a very short period of time. So it's not really worth it for you to invest that much as a whole. I just don't think that's fair. Um, and so this is our textbook. It's, it's pretty nice. I, um, I have to say I like her writing style. I think it's pretty simple. Um, she explains things very, very well. Um, so I read, I read this book this summer. Um, so you will also have to read this book at some point in time during the semester to get some background information. Um, in addition, um, on my RCC, I'll be posting Microbiology and Evolving Science. This is a, uh, a book by Solinsky and Foster. It's a sort of more like traditional, um, you know, like microbiology textbook like you could go out and physically buy a physical copy of this book if you so chose from Amazon or something like that. But it will be available on my RCC for free as a PDF, as an additional resource for you um, in case you're not getting everything you want from the lecture or from this microbiology book from uh, Nina Parker here. Um, it'll be available for you to digest on my RCC. It's free. Everything is free. Uh, there's nothing for you to physically buy for this course, as I mentioned in the introductory email I sent you out um, on um, August 27th. So everything's free. Everything's free, which I think is good because college has enough barriers as a whole. But that being said, there are going to be plenty of resources. And so our primary mode of 
of interacting with each other is going to be through email and it's also going to be through my RCC. So this is basically where everything will be posted. You will get your lectures and the recorded lectures will be there. I will post supplemental readings. Um, that textbook I mentioned will be available for free on my RCC as well. There'll be exam study guides. Your grades will be kept up to date there. Everything you can physically imagine uh, besides your exams will physically be available for you on my RCC. Now, because my RCC is a little bit limited with its assignment of capabilities, uh, your exams will be held on Google uh, Forms. So you, you may have used a Google Form at some point in your life. It's pretty easy to understand. Um, but I will send out the link for that uh, when the exams come. Your other resources is obviously me. Um, if you have any quick questions, email is great. If you have any long questions, email is also great. Um, you can also, again, schedule an appointment with me. Um, I'm more than happy to sit uh, with you um, on Zoom and explain things as much as you need to try to get these concepts across for you. But again, um, I, can't, um, I can't force you to come to Zoom. I can't force you to talk to me. Um, if you really want to know something, if you're really struggling, please just reach out. I'm really, really, honestly very happy to help you all succeed in the the sort of the, the capacity of my role as an instructor. But the, the key thing here is you have to reach out um, because I'm not going to hound you for this. I'm not going to bug you if you don't turn it in grade your work and stuff like that. Um, you need to reach out to me and don't let it sort of stew, right? If you're having problems, you know, the first week of class, don't wait till the end of the semester to tell me about it. Um, tell me about it as soon as you can. And I will, that way I can help you in the most reasonable amount of time and we can resolve this problem. And then finally, um, for those of you that have never taken advantage of it, uh, there is a great uh, resources available, even um, remotely, through the Tutoring and Writing Center um, that can help you out with anything you could possibly need. But again, um, my RCC is going to be your place to go for assignments and all that stuff. And any questions, please, again, do not hesitate to reach out to me. And so the plan for this course is really three main sections. The first one's going to be microbes in general. So this is going to be the foundational microbiology knowledge. We're going to do the history. We're going to do morphology and structure. We're going to do function and then diversity. So laying, again, the, the groundwork for our microbes. Then we're going to go transition to microbes in the environment, looking at metabolism, energetics, ecology, and potential interactions within the environment. And then we're going to look at a few specific types of microbiomes. Um, and when we say microbiomes, it's simply microbes associated with any given area. So it can be associated with your, your butt or it can be associated with the soil. That's what we mean by a microbiome. And then finally, we're going to look at microbes in us. So we're going to look at viruses. We're going to look at disease and patho uh, pathology. Um, we're going to look at vaccines. We're going to look at all sorts of things that are, again, very related to you. And we're also going to talk about food and industry. We're going to talk about how we can use microbes to make our lives better. Um, we're going to talk about how we can use microbes to make food, drugs, anything you can imagine. So that's the plan, three main sections. And this is, again, this is sort of how it's laid out, laying down the fundamentals. Fundamentals here, we're going into the ecology of microbes, and then we're going to talk about how microbes directly affect us. Because, um, you know, the, the latter part of this is by far the most important, right? How microbes affect you is really what's important, right? Any science really only matters as to how it is important to you. But to get to that point, we need to lay down the fundamentals. We need to talk about how microbes get energy and things like that. And then we can talk about all the cool things microbes do, um, whether it's killing you <laughs> or making bread or beer or something cool. So this is a sort of the flow, this sort of three-tier structure. And so um, this is um, the schedule of the course. You'll notice we have 13 lectures. Uh, there's two holidays. So we have Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. Uh, so those, those two weeks, uh, the week of November 4th, or actually the week of November 1st, I think, we won't have any class, so no lecture or lab. And then the Thanksgiving week, again, we won't have any lecture or lab. So we'll have a grand total of 13 classes together. And you'll notice this is going to be the tentative schedule. So you're going to see working on the foundational stuff. That will be the topics for exam one. Then the ecology part will be the topic for exam two. And then the sort of applications part will be the topic of your final exam. Um, and, but you can sort of see here you have all the different assignments that are going to be due. And I'll talk about those in just a moment. And then these are all the textbook chapters you can read to sort of give you some background. Um, anytime you sort of see any dashes here on the readings, um, it's something I will have to post um, some additional readings for you to understand because many, many of these stuff is sort of new, right? So uh, quorum sensing biofilms typically aren't covered in general microbiology textbooks. So this is some additional stuff that I'm going to have to provide for you. And again, always look to my RCC for these additional readings. Uh, but overall, you know, we have the structure of this course and that's great and all, but ult ultimately the goal for this course is to be as adaptive as possible. So if you hear about something cool in the news, um, you know, COVID is one thing and you'll hear about that every day for the next probably year and a half. 
Um, but if you hear about something cool in the news, like if you hear about an outbreak of a flesh-eating bacteria, like this Vibrio that was in uh, on ABC last year, um, you know, let me know. We can talk about it in class. I can explain, we can go through what, what the microbiology is behind this, the pathology. We can talk about anything here. Um, that being said, I'm flexible, not beholden to any specific topic. So we can adapt and change this as we see fit. So if you get really interested in a topic, we can do a deeper dive into it, um, or I can provide additional resources for you. But again, I want this to be your course. If you see something you like, if you hate something, let me know and we can adapt, we can change this course. Um, that being said, we are gonna get to this, um, cl this class here, uh, uh, energetics um, and metabolic ecology. You're going to hate it. Um, there's nothing I can do. We have to talk about it, but everything else is flexible. Um, we can adjust as we need, but again, please just let me know. I like this. I like people to feel like this is your course. We can change it. We can make it better. I'm a very flexible person. Um, in terms of assessments, um, as with every course, you have to be graded in some shape or form. It's just the way it is. Um, so the way this is going to break down is you have uh, exams, you have what's called a Wikipedia assignment, you have lab assignments, participation, and then a final exam. This all comes together to be 400 points. Now, you'll notice that um, the way this breaks down is 20% of your grade is exams, 40% is that wiki assignment, 25% is your lab, and participation itself is 14%. Now, you might be asking yourself, how the heck are we going to participate? We're not in person, right? I don't, can't take it. I'm not, we're not, we're not meeting physically on Zoom or anything like that or in person in class. How are we going to do participation? Well, participation um, is basically you um, are going to be posting each week a question and, and an answer to a question on my, CC, my RCC. So basically what you're going to do is every week based upon the lecture, you're going to post a question to my RCC. That's something that was interesting to you, something that you don't understand, something that you wish you knew more about. You're going to post that to a discussion board on my RCC. Then uh, what you're going to do is try to answer one of your classmates' question. And again, this is um, just you just you participating. Now, this is how things would sort of work in class, right? You ask questions, you try to answer questions, right? So I'm trying to mimic this as a discussion on um, my RCC for you all, um, just to sort of get you thinking, get you participating, um, and get you um, some points, right? You, if you do this every week throughout the class, you get 56 points, which is, um, you know, you know, 12 or 13% in that ball. Well, I can tell you exactly how much it is. It's 14%. Um, so if you don't do this participation portion, you physically can't get an A. But there is also no reason for you not to do it, right? It's something you can do in 10 minutes. Uh, you can post a quick question, answer a question. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be crazy in depth. You just got to do it. So you do it and you get those 56 points. Um, so that's 50. So that's your sort of participation. In addition, please send me an email introduction about yourself. This will include a brief description of your interest in microbiology or science and a question you have about microbiology, as well as something about yourself. Uh, basically, this is my way of getting you to, getting to know you, getting to see what's interesting about science. And so I see like, oh, hey, you're interested in neurobiology. Well, maybe I can tailor a later lecture, um, you know, after we sort of lay down that foundational work to get you thinking about how microbes influence neurobiology which, spoiler alert, they influence neurobiology in crazy ways. And we're going to talk about that later in the semester. But again, this is my way of getting to know you um, outside of sort of talking with you. Um, and so this is, you have to send me an email. It's going to be due the second week by Friday at midnight, so September 11th. This counts towards your participation grade, so it will net you four points or 1% of your final grade. Again, just send me an email. You get 1% of your grade right off the bat. And again, just doing a, just posting a, a question and answering a question again will get you 14% of your grade. So it's a really easy way to get points. And again, you can't get an A without physically doing this. Um, if we were meeting in person, this participation grade would just be simply you showing up. And so this is my way of essentially assessing, hey, are you showing up to class? Are you being engaged in class as a whole? Uh, the biggest proportion of your grade is gonna be your Wikipedia project. And so uh, for those of you that have never, uh, research my, anything about microbes on the internet, or maybe if you have, you, you would have eventually dis discovered this beautiful website called MicroWiki. It's run by the folks of University of Kenyon, so in the Midwest. And uh, it's a really great resource. It's curated by microbiologists, but it's a wiki. So microbiologists write these articles about specific microbes, diseases, techniques, anything you can imagine under the sort of realm of microbiology. A microbiologist has likely written an article about it. So um, because sort of one of the best ways to get you uh, sort of learning and thinking about uh, microbes is to essentially generate new knowledge for yourself, you as a, either an individual or as a group of two are going to create your own microbe wiki article. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose a microbe or choose a topic that interests you. 
Um, and you want to choose a topic that doesn't have a Wikipedia entry on MicroWiki. Uh, or someone that has a wiki entry, but could potentially be improved. So basically, I'm giving you all of microbiology to decide what the heck you want to write about. And you and you, you and your partner, or just you by yourself, are going to write a Wikipedia page. Now, this is going to be um, an iter iterative process. So you're going to first, uh, the first thing you're going to have to do is form a group. Um, and I'll send out a Google Sheet and sign up for that. Then you're going to have to propose your topic to me, and I'll either reject it or accept it. Um, then you're going to you're going to submit a preliminary bibliography to me so I know what you're reading, or maybe I could help point you in the right direction to getting some better literature. Then you're going to give me a draft of the article. Then we're going to do a peer review. So you're going to swap your articles with another group. You're going to review them. You're going to critique your, 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 um, your classmates, and you're going to also critique yourself and your partner if you have one. And then finally, you'll have a final Wikipedia article due towards me to me. Now, this is sort of a broad overview of what it's going to be. I'll post much more specific guidelines on my RCC. In addition, I will post um, a couple examples of some pretty good micro wikis I've had in the past. But uh, I find um, when people do this assignment, they really like it. You get a lot of freedom. So if you're interested in pathology, there's all sorts of topics under pathology that you can do. If you're interested in metabolism, there's all sorts of things you can do. If you're interested in the environment, like I am, there's all sorts of things you can do. So it's pretty flexible. But again, it's getting you to create some new knowledge. And for, you're going to remember this micro Wikipedia project for a very, very long time. When you create something like this, you tend to remember. Um, we have exams, there'll be three exams. But what you'll notice is your exams are only worth about 20% of your grade, um, with your sort of two in the middle of the semester exams um, worth 48 points apiece, and your final exam worth 40 points. And so these will be based on the lecture material and any assigned readings. Um, so again, regular, regularly attending my lectures, i.e. just watching them, is the best way to answer these questions because I always take my questions directly from my slides um, but my slides, remember, do draw heavily upon your textbook as well. So, um, you know, the best way to do this is watching the, the lectures, reading the slides. That's where all the material is going to be from. Uh, the test questions themselves will be multiple choice, true, false, or matching. Um, so there's no short answer. It's just going to be all multiple choice questions in some shape or form. And again, as I mentioned, you have three exams. Uh, they're based on section one, two, and three, as I sort of highlighted. Uh, your first one is going to be October 7th. The second one will be November 4th. And then your final exam will be due December 16th. Now, the way these will work is I will send out a Google um, form that will be a multiple choice um, exam of the questions. You have one opportunity to submit this exam. So you, you, know, you go through selecting your answers, and then you submit it, then you get your grade right there. It's automatically graded, which is nice for me and nice for you. Um, but you do only get one shot at doing this because the way these work, it shows you the answers right after. Um, and so you only get one shot at doing your exams. There's really no um, sort of redos on the exams. You get one shot. And that's the same way you, it would be if you did it in person as well. And the other final thing I'd just like to say about the exams, remember, they're not, they're not a huge proportion of your grades. So you can do bad on one exam and do better on the next one, and they'll sort of even themselves out in your final grade. But the key for sort of doing well in this course is, again, that microbe wiki and your participation do really make up a huge proportion of your grade as a whole. Um, and um, yeah, so that's your exams. Uh, and then the final part, portion of where you're going to be great is your laboratory. Uh, microbiology is a very beautiful hands-on science, as you can see from this picture on the slide here. Um, it's a really awesome, awesome science for seeing in person. So it's kind of a shame we're not together so you can see all the amazing things microbes do. But you know, there's not much we can do at this point. But the lab itself is designed to familiarize yourself working with bacteria. So we're going through some pretty standard, very broadly applicable microbiology techniques um, in the laboratory. Again, but it's all going to be virtual. So you're going to be learning about them, watching videos, things like that. And you're going to be tested on them um, as a whole. Um, again, I'm, it's sort of an unfortunate thing. We can't meet in person for this, but this is really unfortunately not much we can do on this front. Now, the way you're going to be tested on your lab is going to be a couple things. So you're going to have 10 pre-lab quizzes um, throughout the semester, and you're going to have 10 post-lab homeworks. So the idea being is for each lab, you're going to have a quiz that is going to be due. 
Um, and this quiz will be testing you on what you're going to be doing that week for that exercise. And then you, after you finish that exercise, you're going to have a series of questions in the form of your post labs homework that's going to be due the following week. So that's the way this is going to work. Uh, I, I mentioned there's 10 total, uh, but each, each one is, um, of those 10, I'm only going to keep the best seven. So each one is going to be worth about five points a piece and five points a piece for your homework as well. So you, you'll drop your three worst quizzes and your three worst homeworks. I'm sort of giving you a little bit of flexibility as a whole in case you have to miss one or in case you do really bad, you know, because you didn't understand the material or something. And then finally, you could have an unknown report. So basically, you're going to take all these techniques at the end of the semester. I'm going to give you a, a, a sort of a worksheet to work through identifying um, a, a couple of unknown microbes based upon um, what you've been learning throughout the semester. And, you, and you'll see what that looks like as we go. And we'll talk about it um, sort of as the semester progresses. But this is how you're going to be grading for the lab. Um, it's, pretty, um, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, again, it's nothing, nothing crazy. And it's sort of just sort of fortunate thing that we just aren't, again, aren't meeting together. And then finally, you have the potential to earn some extra credit. Um, so you can earn up to 1% uh, of your total grade or 20 total points by what, what I like to call mini writing assignments. And this is basically a way for you to get some extra credit as well as diving deeper into topics that interest you. So what you're going to be doing is writing a two-page synopsis of a primary research article. Again, this is completely optional. You do not have to do it. Um, and you're going to be writing a synopsis of a primary research article that is related to a topic we are covering that week or from a previous week or something coming up in the future. Uh, the directions for this are in the syllabus. Um, but again, you can earn up to 20 extra credit points or 1% of your, or about 1% of your, uh, I'm sorry, about 5% of your total grade um, just through extra credit. So if you feel like you're struggling, if you feel like you need some extra points just in case, um, really uh, not a difficult way to sort of get um, get some points. Um, but again, please make sure you contact me ab uh, about what you're going to choose. I just want to make sure the article is appropriate, that it's not going to be too difficult because there's a lot of science out there that you might find interesting, but it just might be sort of over your head. Um, so next up is uh, academic honesty, science and the reliability of, and the public opinion of science relies heavily on the integrity of science. So when we think about like, I go to the doctor and I get this medicine, that medicine has gone through some pretty rigorous science. And it's gone through some pretty rigorous science because of the integrity of science. So we can say vaccines are good for you. They prevent diseases. They save lives because there's been decades of science done behind it. Reliable uh, science done by science, scientists with a high degree of integrity. So, um, and as we'll sort of talk about one person falsifying data can cast doubt on an entire field of study. And so as a scientist, I am very protective of that trust. And so I will hold you to very high standards in your work. So I will, if you, if I find that you're cheating, if I find that you're plagiarizing, if I find that you're working together on assignments that you're not supposed to be, um, I will follow the essentially the university's policies that are very, very clear on this matter. So the bottom line here is don't cheat. I will catch you. It's really easy to catch people that are cheating. Um, so if you have any questions on this, please do let me know. Um, but please, again, uh, try to limit the amount of, of, of cheating and keep yourself to a very high standard because, you know, science is very much integrity based, but pretty much every field out there is integrity based. So um, again, please, 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 please. And one more, please do not cheat. And so that's going to be the sort of the, the end of this. Um, if you have any course policy questions, um, please let me know. We can chat about it over Zoom, phone, or email. Um, I'm very flexible in terms of timing. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, please do let me know. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And if you have any questions again, please talk to me. Let me know. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to the semester. I hope you guys learn a lot. And I hope you guys all have a great day.